All right, we're calling the meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. Um, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, to flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. all. Right. You know, when we say the Pledge of Allegiance, I don't know how they have done these group singing things that they've done. Yeah. You know, to coordinate <laughs> that. And it makes no sense to me. Probably takes a lot of editing. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, there she is. Hi, Hi Leah. Leah. Hello. Um, John, do we have any changes or additions to the agenda tonight? Uh, we do not, Lisa. Our agenda is good to go. All right. Does anyone else have any changes or additions? All right. Bethany, it's um, public comment. Um, do you have any waiting? I'm guessing no. One. Okay. It was a public comment, I believe, regarding the presentation from Melissa Ogerland, but those comments have sent, been sent to Mr. Hoover, and I believe he is planning on reading them. Correct. So, I'm sorry, I just, now, I just got a text message from a teacher who said that the board meeting isn't streaming. Is it working? Yes, it's working. If they had have tried right at 6, it, they wouldn't have got to it since we started at about 6.01 or 6.02. Okay, I'll let her know. Thanks. So, Lisa, on the uh, public comment, it's uh, one that will be shared when we get to one of our staff okay. student spotlight items. All right. Um, I think we're ready to go there. Um, Stephanie? I think we had something from Melissa Okerlund. Next. Yes, I'm sorry. I was texting the teacher to try to log in again. So, oh, okay. Um, yeah, thank you. So, um, I wanted to just there are a couple of of uh, staff spotlights that I wanted to highlight this month, and one of them specifically is around Lisa Oker, uh, Melissa Oakland, excuse me. Um, so, back in the fall, Melissa was approached by a community um, member named um, Linda Dewey. Um, who is part of a local group trying to was trying to preserve the cemetery out in um, um, Glen Arbor Township that was damaged in the storm of 2015. And it had been on the National Parks um, agenda sort of radar to clean it up, but it wasn't high on their priority list. And Linda approached Melissa, who then partnered with her to um, use her students, the eighth grade students, to learn about the people that were buried in the cemetery, um, their historical significance of the lives of the people that were there. Um, and it was um, discovered that four of them were Civil War veterans, which dovetailed very nicely with Lisa's curriculum in her, in her history curriculum. And so they formed a partnership. And Melissa took all of this on um, from bringing in members of the historical society to the classroom to work with students for, to help them research the lives of the people that were there to agreeing to help clean up the cemetery. Um, and then they were able to work with a local company that cleared all the trees and the brush so that students could then go in and pick up the pieces and um, preserve those graves. And then to um, what was supposed to have been a Memorial Day celebration at the cemetery, recognizing the Civil War veterans that were buried there, um, and really agreeing to carry on this partnership in successive years so that students would learn about these lives, adopt the graves, do the research on the lives of the people, um, clean it up, and then help to memorialize these people each year. So um, I just, I really thought it was important that we um, recognize Melissa for this work because these community partnerships um, help bring the curriculum that the students learn about in the classroom to life. They help bring relevance to that curriculum, but they take a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of planning, a lot of meetings. Um, and Melissa basically took all this on and made it come to life for those students. So we're super excited about this project. It was written up in the Glen Arbor Sun. And uh, most recently, Brendan Queeley with the Record Eagle will be following up to do a feature um, on the follow-up to the story, which is that 
um, our own Don Miller actually lives in one of the homes, apparently, that was inhabited by one of these Civil War veterans. And the kids are going to go out and um, visit these old homesteads now with their parents and learn more about the life of these um, veterans that, that are buried there. So we're super excited for Melissa. And I know that John wants to share some thoughts around um, this partnership as well. Yeah, great. Thanks, Steph. That was so well said. And uh, really, this is what Linda has sent uh, my way. So I'll read that on her behalf. Steph, I'm so grateful you mentioned Don Miller, though. Uh, the, the veteran is uh, Edmund Trumbull. So we sure all know about Trumbull Road and, uh, and the fact that Don, uh, so they, they took a tour virtually uh, through Zoom of the house, the kids, and uh, Linda, Melissa, and Don, of course, was the perfect guide to be able to talk about uh, some of the history of that house. This is from Linda. And, and obviously, although Linda is, and, and wonderfully so, recognizing and honoring Melissa, uh, Linda, we sure want to recognize and honor you. Uh, you put uh, a lot into this to get the impetus going. And then, yes, uh, Melissa. Uh, and the kids took it from there, but we're so grateful to you, Linda. All right, when I first approached Mrs. Oakland at the suggestion of the principal two years ago, she was immediately enthusiastic, especially because of the four Civil War veterans buried there. When I presented her with a plan last year, she embraced it and shared it with her colleagues. When, finally, the National Park and Partial Tree Care experts decided to prioritize this project this fall with uh, partial tree care donating their work, I again went to Mrs. Oakland. She agreed. Now was the time. We took the plan to Mrs. Long, who approved it wholeheartedly. The students were enthusiastic as well. When I presented them with the problem and the opportunity, the cemetery was buried under fallen trees that would soon be cleared, but the records had been lost. The only map we had was hand-drawn from Glen Lake Middle School students led by Mary Sutherland in 1977, and that was of standing gravestones. Many more were buried there with wooden markers that had long since decayed. So we were coming back to Glen Lake Middle School again. Could they help us research and find the stories for who was buried there? Whether cancellations and COVID-19 notwithstanding, the work the students have performed is extraordinary, especially given the fact that it was no longer required work more, after March 13th, I was no longer able to assist. Mrs. Okerlund surprised me as she continued with the project, even in the midst of the difficulties presented in adapting school to distance learning. Mrs. Okerlund has put in an excess of 100 hours of her own time on this project, astounding. I do want to recognize the excellent local historians who have aided us in this project as well, especially Mr. Andrew White of Traverse City. Kim Kelderhouse of the Leelanau Historical Society, a cadre of individuals and backing from Susan Pocklington of Preserve Historic Sleeping Bear and Tom Ulrich and Scott Tucker of the Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. And we're not done. By happenstance, we get our field trip tomorrow evening for a few students, at least after all. Mrs. Okerlund, of course, will be there. Thank you to the school administration and board for supporting this project. To Mrs. Okerlund, who was highly professional and always held student safety, standards, and objectives first and foremost in consideration, and to the students themselves for their outstanding work. I am so happy to see the board recognizing this unusual and outstanding effort. Thank you all. Linda Dewey. That's wonderful. Um, the, um, the next um, recognition is for Amy White for the, um, uh, the Wellness Committee. Yes, thank you. So um, as many of you are aware, the um, Amy White has spearheaded this Wellness Committee for Glen Lake. And this year specifically worked really tirelessly with the state of Michigan and with the ISD to ensure that our sexual um, sex ed curriculum was um, aligned and um, working to ensure that the wellness committee 
had a vision and had a mission and some specific goals. She um, went through the process of making certain that we had the chairperson, the board approved this process. And in the midst of all of this organizing and planning that Amy was doing, she also wrote the school um, as part of an awards um, recognition. It's a very competitive award. Not very many schools are recognized for their work. And I just wanna read a little bit about this award. Maple City Glen Lake Junior Senior High School is a shining example of what it builds, of what it takes to build healthy school environments. The Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, in collaboration with the Michigan Department of Education, United Dairy Industry of Michigan, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, and Action for Healthy Kids, wishes to congratulate Amy White, your team, and your students on the Michigan School Wellness Gold Award. The School Wellness Award recognizes schools that are making significant policy and environmental improvements in their environment related to healthy eating, physical activity, and tobacco-free lifestyles. So that's amazing. So we wanna congratulate Amy and the committee specifically for this work. We are, as a school community and as our students, we reap the benefits of the work that Amy does behind the scenes with, with wellness, um, whether it be teaching kids about mindfulness um, how to decompress, how to, to um, do yoga, whether, or whether it's teaching them about healthy foods or how to make healthy choices um, or how to partner with people in our community. Some of the things that, that you'll recognize at Glen Lake, the free fruit available to everybody throughout the school building. Um, I've been in, I don't know how many schools, I've never seen it. It's, I've never seen it in any school that I've ever been in. Um, healthy snacks and no vending machines. Most schools, have a very difficult time getting vending machines full of candy and sugary snacks out of their buildings. And Amy has um, spearheaded with this. Um, our farm to table um, program with cafe options. She's partnering with John in food service to ensure that our kids have healthy choices. Noon activities to support movement. She's worked with the state of Michigan to write a grant for us to have um, activities and resources available for students to use during lunch to stay physically engaged during the school day. We have staff and student fitness opportunities at the school, freedom from chemical dependency programming. Amy works on the advisory committee um, with our counseling department to ensure that our students are trained in how to um, live a chemical free life. Um, our advisory social emotional learning curriculum with mental health and wellness components. Again, Amy works with that advisory committee to ensure those are built into the curriculum for students. And just even something as simple, which takes a tremendous amount of planning um, is the farmer's market that comes into the school in the fall. So these are just a handful of the activities that Amy oversees and in her partnership with the state of Michigan and other area agencies to ensure that our kids have healthy choices and healthy options to enjoy during the school day. So congratulations to Amy on the gold award and to Glen Lake for really, I think, living and showing the example of what it means to be um, a healthy school. So thank you, Amy. Thank you. Um, are you there, Mark? Um, the next um, spotlight is on the, um, the Senior Recognition Committee. I actually wanted to recognize Mark as part of the committee, if you're okay with that. Or Mark, do you want to jump in? I'm not sure why you jumped in. That was my spot. Thanks to oh. Lisa. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm Go. just kidding. I'm just kidding. Go. Thank you. Um, thanks, Lisa. Yeah, I've got that uh, to highlight as part of my cabinet report, but um, I just can't say enough about the group of, of teachers and staff that just went above and beyond um, as challenging as it's been for our, for our teachers to uh, do their online teaching with our students and trying to keep them engaged. Uh, they just, their efforts were tireless in the number of efforts that, uh, that they put together by and large. And so much of it was just brainstorming and uh, Zoom meetings and email idea throwing, and then more dialogue would occur and then something was born. And those somethings as we know uh, was the the social media coverage for our seniors uh, and our our staff and uh, the parade w recently, which w has been a huge success, and uh, just the planning and the collaboration that has gone into so many of these things, stemming way back to 
why don't we ninja sign, right? So uh, I just, it's been such a joy being part of those conversations and really just ha listening and sitting back and watch that team take the reins, drive that bus, and just go, in my, in my opinion, well above and beyond uh, to recognize our, our great class of 2020. And uh, you know what I think was Steph's idea to form that senior recognition committee um, where they took us and our, and our class and our school was in such a positive light that I, I think I speak for all of us uh, as part of this Zoom to say, a heartfelt and sincere, sincere thank you. And Lisa, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna call them out by name. Are you okay with that? Thanks Steph, gonna, please do. Yeah. <laughs> sure, so first of all, Mark's being humble because he really was the admin connection with this committee and the seniors. Um, so it's Kathy Kangas, Jill Walker, Emily Alt, Jerry Angers, Amy White, Dana Schlosser, and then Mark and Jen Fosmore in the secretary um, from, from the secondary office. And, um, you know, Mark mentioned it, but there were some really beautiful little personal touches. They coordinated um, note cards so that every student, every senior received um, at least one, if not more than one personal handwritten note by a staff member in their senior bags. Um, they coordinated a t-shirt and on the back of it is every senior listed um, that went home in those bags. Mark coordinated the tote bags that have the Glen Lake logo and only the seniors got one that said 2020 on them. So there were just teeny small little personal touches, but I think it made it really personal for our kids. And, and it was a way I think for our staff to bond with these seniors in a way that we weren't really certain we were gonna be able to do um, even a couple of weeks ago. So. Thank you, Mark, and um, for coordinating with Jen, and thank you to this entire committee for making that all happen. It was it was really special, I think, for our kids. Thank you. Um, I don't know if Spencer is here for the student council report. I don't see him, but I don't know if someone else has that, maybe. Uh, Mark would have that, uh, Lisa. All right. Yes, uh, Spencer was scheduled to be here and I have not heard from him. So I'm hoping that everything is okay and assuming that something came up for him. Um, you know, this was, I wanted him to be here um, and he had a few bullet points to speak on. Uh, and I'll, I, maybe I'll give it just a minute to see if uh, I'll lower at 620 to see if he uh, jumps aboard. But uh, part of that was having him here was going to be to honor him for his work this year as our student body president and the as we know how many additional hours each week go into um, leading and um, organizing and executing our meetings and our activities and I just wanted to highlight him tonight, which would, uh, because this would technically be his last meeting and his last student council report due to graduation. So he's sort of, uh, you know, off the clock, if you will, after tonight's board meeting and then uh, graduation. And so I really wanted him to be here to publicly say thank you to him for the work that he's done. And he has uh, served us very, very well. And uh, we certainly welcome Millie Fogelsong, uh, who will be our student body president next year uh, to the role. And uh, she knows that Spencer has uh, helped pave a, a fantastic trail of really the student body having ownership in our school uh, and the many activities and such that go into it as well they should. And so we as staff and admin are here to facilitate what they want <coughs> in their awesome school. And Spencer has uh, done a fantastic job of, of leading the way and, and modeling that leadership to others in our building. And so I, I really wanted to say thanks to him tonight. Uh, and I'm just sad that he's not here to be able to do that for all of us to be able to do that. But uh, I believe he was gonna report out on the online process and then to congratulate those seated. And uh, I know that he was uh, going to be here to say thank you to our board and to Mr. Hoover and, and to Mrs. Long and Ms. Zimmer and uh, to our school in general before he signed off. So um, I'll, I'll leave it at that for now and I'll shoot him a text to see, uh, to get a status update from him. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Mark.
All right. Well, we'll let us know if Spencer gets on. I will. Um, uh, we're moving on to our consent agenda, which um, consists of the approval of the board minutes, the approval of the financial reports, um, and then a couple of personnel issues, um, or the approval of a middle school soccer coach and uh, approval of an uh, operations department secretary. Um, do you wanna, do you guys wanna say anything about that? No? Right. Do we have a motion? I will move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Is there any discussion? I just want to say I've had uh, quite a bit of experience with future coach, Mr. Switzer, and it's a, it's a great hire, Mark. I'm really excited to see him uh, carry on with the group of kids that are coming up that he's been with for a couple of years. So I'm really excited to see that hire. It's great. Thanks. Thank you, Jason. Really super uh, pleased that he applied for the position. And I think it was largely at uh, Rachel Stein's urging because she knows him well too. And through the few conversations that I had with, with him, he, he, he fits the bill. He's the kind of person we want around our students in our program. Thank you, Jason. All right, anyone else? Bethany, how about a roll call vote? Picnic. Yes. Puzzle Masu. Yes. Shane Halls. Yes. Mosier. Yes. Westner. Yes. Homa. Yes. Siddell. Yes. Motion carries. Um, moving on to our discussion items, um, we have some cabinet reports. Um, John, do you, um, it, are we? Um, yeah. We're going to go through those one at a time. Or? Right. Well, just uh, they, they know the order that they're going to be in, Lisa. And, and board, this will be uh, similar to what we uh, shared with you as an administrative cabinet back in January. And so this uh, report period is to cover from uh, middle of January till this point in the year. And then board uh, will triangulate this process in September. Cabinet reports will come to you at the regular meeting in September as members of the cabinet report to you the work that uh, occurred during the summer and as we prepared and, and moved into the start of the new school year. So with that, uh, board, unless you have any questions for us, Trina, you are up first, please. All right, I'm ready. Does the board have a copy of my principal's report or should I share my screen? Share your screen, please. All right, thank you. Okay, so here is an elementary um, second semester um, principal report. So it's kind of, um, I look at as a, the first trimester and the second trimester or some um, marking period because it was two totally different uh, worlds if you wanna look at it that way. So in the first part of the year, we completed our middle of year testing, uh, but we were not able to do our end of year testing um, for obvious reasons. One of the things though that came up with middle of the year testing and the data days that we still are looking at even this late in the game, um, to give you an example of um, why we do our data days and um, why they are so full of information and how we can use that information is just the other day we were talking about a student who um, we were thinking about taking to CORE, our CORE team, who looks at students who are struggling in their classrooms and different people on the team will offer ideas for interventions. And when looked at the student's data for um, from the beginning of the year to the middle of the year reading, um, what we saw was this student is still performing at a lower level than their classmates, but whatever that teacher was doing was having great success because this student now was showing high growth, which means if that student can stay now on that trajectory, that student then will over the next, usually um, conditions would show in about two years could be 
at grade level. So that, that's just an example of how we use that data all year, keep talking about students, how to meet student needs, um, interventions, and our Title I interventions this year that were led by Jen Gretzmacher and assisted by Tesha Milliron with much success. So that was that. Um, so as you know, um, outside of the four classroom walls, a lot of the enrichment comes from the extra activities that we allow children to participate in, including the fun PTO had so many activities planned for this year, the second semester, and the one that they were able to get off and running was the daddy daughter dance, the winter wonderland dance, which was a success. And I think what I heard from the little girls most was they're, they're the line, I felt like a princess. They just loved the idea of getting dressed up. And um, so I'm glad we were able to get that one running. We unfortunately did not get the wellness fair. That would have been our second annual time of doing that, but we do look forward to doing that next year. Um, that's in conjunction with our wellness committee, like um, what Amy's being recognized for. So PTO is really excited to keep that going. We also had quite a few in just two months um, field trips and uh, camp experiences. Um, we went to the Dennis Museum in first grade and locked with sec sixth grade. Um, we had a spelling bee, we had battle of books. Um, March was reading month and we had an assembly for that. So all that took place in just two months. And then finally, um, as far as that other after school enrichment activities, our fifth graders will remember went to state and placed eighth. Um, robotics team placed to eighth in the whole state of Michigan. So that was quite an honor. And we recognized those fifth graders again, Justin Thompson, Ryan Needham, Ali O'Neill, Sawyer Homa, Imogen Thompson, David Kish, Lincoln Bailey, and Jake Bixby. Because the skills that you can learn as a robotics um, team member really do carry over into character and what they're doing with their classmates and in the classrooms. And um, we're just so very proud of them. The other uh, big thing that I think that really helped the elementary school that we are so grateful to you, uh, Mr. Hoover and school board on is the uh, appointing a student support liaison in the elementary school. Um, Vanessa Gutzka was hired as that person and then she had to go on leave. And so Sarah Wetmore filled that role for quite a few weeks and she did such a fantastic job that when Janessa came back, um, we were fortunate to have both helping us out in that role because of the relationships that Sarah already built. Then we were able to add Janessa in to build even more relationships. Um, the more that you can help students have those one-on-one -on -one connections with positive role models, adults, people who can help them get organized at the end of the day, um, help them take movement breaks, have those conversations when uh, a poor decision has been made, the more positive interaction with adults, the better. And that was just really a big success for us. Number of office referrals in those couple months did go down. Um, we had started our gifted and talented committee and then that was put on hold when um, we were not able to meet in person, but we do have adults identified. We have uh, parents. Um, we also have staff members who wanna be involved in Leela. Levanter is still interested in heading up that committee. And so those conversations are still happening. We want to be able to visit schools when schools open again to get models. But I think there's also going to be some research done still in the meantime um, for something that fits best for Glen Lake. So that was another big move this past semester. Kindergarten Roundup will happen. So when I wrote this, we were in the process of talking dates and whatnot. And since then, there's been some discussion that in August, we will, we will be holding our Kindergarten Roundup and it will look like a picnic. Um, and so we'll invite all of the kindergartners and young fives to a picnic outside in the school. And at that time, that'll also allow our kindergartners to meet their classmates, to see their rooms, to meet their teachers. Um, so that's in August. The exact date will come um, as soon as we set it, and we will make sure that all of our new families have that date, and that will be advertised. So I'm really excited about that one. And I shouted this one last time, and again, I just need to keep shouting because the Glen Lake staff have gone above and beyond in their continuation of services to our students and families. They have um, 
I, I can't summarize it any better, but I'll say every single staff member pushed themselves out of their comfort zones, pushed for excellence, and met it at every turn. From online learning and resources, assembling packets to be sent home, personal deliveries to students, end of driveway teaching, cleaning and packing, budgeting reviews, making class lists and completing report cards, and on and on and on. And they met this. They exceeded anything that we could have asked for. They did it mostly on a computer with their own drive, with their own, you know, creativity. And um, they just, I could not be more proud of a school staff at a time when so fast things were happening and they just stepped up. So um, please be proud of your elementary staff. I know you are. Um, Cause I also told them too, that the board is asking, how can you be of support to our teaching staff? And so they have been tasked with thinking about that over the next month or two and would like to reach out to you because um, they are grateful. They've always felt your support and they're grateful that you want to do so um, in this turbulent time. And then um, because I will be signing off, I once again want to thank the Board of Education, the elementary school staff and the Glen Lake community for giving me the opportunity to serve you this past year. It has been a true honor to be a part of the Glen Lake family as I've been surrounded by excellence, love, support, laughter, and friendship by the adults and students, I have been so fortunate to stand next. With sincerity, I love you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Trina. Any questions before I mute? No. Good luck, Trina. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Best of luck. Love you guys. Uh, Stephanie, I think you're up next. If you're oh, ready. Thank you. Like so it. hopefully you can see my screen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Impressive. Well, um, <laughs> I like wanted to just comes. summarize, um, try to condense and put it in a form that you can then look back and quickly see what some of the milestones were for secondary um, from January, really end of January until now. So um, starting with the formation of the leadership team all the way over to the left, um, that team got started in January and we've been continuing to meet. Um, they've been identifying priorities. We um, had a report out today from Matt Pichel at our staff meeting. He sent a summary update of the leadership team moving forward, um, hoping to partner with Dina as soon as she gets on board to continue that work. Um, the work of the sixth grade into the middle school, we got your approval in February. And since then we have welcomed three fifth grade teachers into the middle school. Um, room assignments are done. And um, they have um, contributed their budgets with regard to what curricular materials they'll need to um, move forward with sixth grade. Um, the counselors, I, I can't say enough about Bethany and Matt. We worked so hard and they did so much work to ensure that we had a really high quality schedule ready to go for the fall. We had the addition of five advanced placement classes. We've added wood shop. We have three sections of that. We have a graphic design section. We have robotics in the middle school now. Um, and I'm sure I'm forgetting other additions, but it's been an incredible process. And they went over and above to make certain that our schedule um, is going to be, um, it's just, it just provide, it's going to provide for some great opportunities for our kids to be able to stay on campus. Um, and that's in addition to being able to offer dual enrollment now in an online way, which will save the district a considerable amount of money for students who um, need to be able to stay in the building and not lose two hours of their day um, heading over to NMC. Number one, it'll be safer. Number two, it'll be more cost effective. And three, we don't lose anything because those credits are part of the Michigan transfer agreement. So that will be extremely helpful. Um, with our instrumental music program, um, we have have we have Eli George on staff already. He's been busy um, coordinating with our sixth grade families to um, introduce our sixth grade kids. Part of that schedule that the counselors were able to work out will include a separate band class just for sixth graders um, and where he will be able to teach all different kinds of instruments. And he's working on band camps with them over the summer as well. Um, you heard a little bit about school wellness already with Amy White, but it also includes, we did, we were able to launch the Habitudes curriculum into the um, advisory program before we had to break in March. And so that, that curriculum will continue in advisory next year. Um, in travel, you were able to approve the travel experiences for the actually K-12, but specifically for us, sixth through 11th grade travel experiences in addition to a 12th grade international trip. 
and any other ELA trip. Thankfully, they were able to take that this year before we broke. So that was at least something for some of the seniors. Our advanced placement coursework, um, in addition to those dual enrollment options, is super exciting. Our entire AP staff had been signed up to do some training this summer, specifically either around the new tests or new curriculum, but um, that training has been postponed in Grand Rapids, and so they are looking for other opportunities. Um, Melissa Okerlund will be starting the AP Psychology class here, which is really exciting. Emily Alt will be reviving advanced placement literature. Um, Chris Herman will be teaching both AP government and um, AP history. Um, we are offering AP bio and AP chem in addition to AP um, environmental science. So we just really were able to explode those offerings in there. The classes look hearty and hail. Oh, and I mentioned, I should have mentioned also AP statistics. So we're super excited about all of that. And then with our interventions, one of the other things we were able to do in the schedule is we were able to offer some level two interventions for struggling students who may or may not have an IEP or a 504 plan, but just for anybody who needs some support. So there'll be two sections at the middle school, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, and two sections at the high school, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. So ideally, regardless of what a day looks like for a student in their schedule, if they need some support, they'll have that hour that we can schedule them into um, with one of our academic teachers and they were designed so that there will be a math science and an English social studies teacher um, so we can put them in the section that best meets the needs that they have. So we're super excited about that. Um, in addition, Nate Sneed was approved for the, as that SSI person and he jumped right in wholeheartedly. Um, and so he's been tracking students who've been struggling throughout this COVID crisis. He's been also doing some Otis training to learn about that tracking system. Um, so there's some really exciting things going on there, and we were able to reduce some testing for eighth graders because they're already doing um, um, so much. So, so we feel really, really good about the where secondary is right now with these systems and structures in place that should allow them next year to even um, go to the next level. And in the next slide, I'll talk just a little bit. Let's see if I can get it to go. There we go. Um, so how, what would this look like for next year then? So we've got these processes in place um, around, um, we're still working on finalizing that handbook as the more we dug into it, the more we realized um, it needed some more work. So the code of conduct was really just sort of step one. And so that handbook will be fleshed out over the summer and completed. Um, we, we put some processes in place around purchasing, around decision-making. We put a process in place around students applying for transportation, driving their own cars to and from campus, just sort of tightening it up a little bit so it um, provided a little bit of accountability for kids to be safe on campus and some room for administration to have conversations with families when maybe driving had gone astray. Um, we because of this crisis, I will say actually streamlined the use of Google Classroom and it, it's um, been a pretty efficient way for the secondary to communicate with their students. So I'm sure that that will continue to be developed as well. Um, we have um, staff really sort of digging in and taking some ownership of the direction that they want that secondary school to go in. So we've got that leadership team. Um, one of the goals that the staff can be talking about is how to best align their PLC work next year around some um, some school-wide um, improvement goals. We have those student supports in place now. Um, I will work with Dina as soon as she's um, ready. To, I know she's got a lot of transitioning to do. I feel her pain <laughs> on my other end, um, but she and I will talk for sure. And I'll, I'll fill her in on a lot of this stuff so that she's not number one, starting from square one, but also so that staff can just continue to move forward. And then um, those leadership team plans will be really helpful. The leadership team has fleshed out challenges and opportunities moving forward with the plan for next year in several different categories. And they've documented the brainstorming that the staff have done as well as resources available to help with that planning. So for next year, then our next steps in the process would be to um, define those instructional goals and align that to a clearly defined um, secondary vision or core values, whatever they want to determine those to be. Um, and then develop a schedule to use student data to inform their building level instructional goals, align their PLC work um, with systems in place to monitor and review. I think one of the things that we learned through COVID is that um, it's been difficult um, for administration to monitor, to monitor instruction, but it's also been difficult for staff to monitor um, students in this, in this remote world. So coming up with those plans to tighten those gaps will be important. 
And then aligning professional learning to the vision and the goals to provide for individualized staff learning needs. We know we're gonna have a lot of needs over the summer. Um, I talked about that a little bit before. So those are really sort of the next steps or the challenges I think um, over the summer and then heading into the fall. Okay, I just did that really, really fast. Any questions? <laughs> that was a great presentation, Stephanie. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck to you, Stephanie, also. Thank you. <laughs> you Thanks. A lot on your plate. Yeah, I had my last staff meeting today and that was a little, it was hard. It was, it was sweet. So I'm gonna miss you, thank you. I'm gonna miss everybody. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, we're hoping we can collaborate with you guys more. Oh, we already started today. We're 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 there. The staff, we think we've got a little plan for the Leland staff and the Glen Lake staff to do some summer learning together. Oh, so that'll you. be great. That's wonderful. Thank you. All right. Mark, you're up. Great. Thank you. Uh, and an update from Spencer. He had a uh, urgent situation at work. He just got out and he's on his way home quickly. So I'm going to uh, make sure to let him know that he should uh, take his time getting home. So he sends his regrets uh, in the moment here. So going starting with uh, January and working toward the present, some highlights and points of pride in uh, some of the areas that uh, I'm responsible for overseeing, beginning with visual and performing arts. Eli is gonna get uh, double kudos this evening uh, because uh, it, it, he really is, and I cannot wait, and I speak for staff, for everybody to get a chance to, to meet Eli. And I know we've mentioned him many times before, but he really has hit the ground running. And I so look forward to his work with our students in the fall, and he's getting doing so much to prepare at this time. So it was a really big hire for our school. Uh, and the right kind of person, again, to, to be mentoring our students. In-house screen printing, coming to Glen Lake. Um, we had a slight uh, glitch with our vendor, minor, but worked out. And uh, that equipment is on order and should be here in plenty of time. And I know Jill Walker is super excited, as uh, are some of our students to get started and get ready to, uh, to create our own Laker apparel in-house. So we're really uh, fired up about that addition. Moving on to athletics, back in February, we were fortunate to send eight girls uh, to Women in Sports Leadership. That conference uh, suited those young ladies very well and had an outstanding experience. And thanks to our board again for, for um, allowing them to, to attend that and gain that experience. Our boys and girls basketball teams, going back to February, both captured conference championships. And then as we know, uh, that COVID set in, we were fortunate enough to host the MHSA Boys and Girls Bowling Regionals, as well as the MHSA Girls, Bas Girls Basketball Tournament. As we know, the, our Lakers went on to capture that district tournament championship uh, and moved on to the regional level. And this is where the, the hard part comes in for so many of us, because both our boys and girls basketball teams had uh, such potential in that MHSA tournament that we will never know where we will would have uh, finished that journey, but the boys advanced to that district final that they never got to play before COVID set in and, and we parted ways. And our girls were set for that regional final against Manton uh, before being halted by the, the coronavirus pandemic. So uh, all in all, a fantastic season for both of those teams. Uh, Postseason awards to about five or six of our boys and girls, including girls basketball head coach Jason Bradford being awarded the Basketball Coaches Association of Michigan's Regional Coach of the Year, which is a fantastic honor. We had two Laker ski team members qualify for and participate at state finals, which was uh, fantastic for them to excel and finish their seasons at the state final level. Uh, excited to report that our bowling participation was up 11 students from, from last year, which is fantastic. So we hope that that grows from there. And of course, uh, our cheer team, um, that sideline cheer squad works their hearts out every single day and evening in supporting our programs. And I can't say thanks enough to, to those young ladies as well as Coach Jen Parker for, for their efforts. This spring, we hired Nate Sneed to be the next lead of our Laker football program. 
And I, I, I want to mention the work that Nate is doing as well as he, oh, he's like a caged lion and he's uh, just so fired up. And that is exactly what we knew we would get in Nate. And uh, we, we know that his motivation and excitement in leading that program is going to be second to none. So I've been working closely with Nate on a number of things within the program and uh, look forward to big things as we roll forward to the, to the fall. A couple of weeks ago, we recognized nine of our outstanding senior scholar athletes uh, on awards night. So I want to say congratulations to them as well, since we're live here and that video is pre-recorded. So uh, we certainly have so many outstanding student athletes in our school, in our program, but uh, uh, those nine were uh, so very well deserving to earn those awards. And I know we've talked about this before everybody, but uh, thanks to Rachel Stein Statistical Services is what I, I guess I call this. She reports that 78% of our high schoolers participated or were going to participate in athletics this school year. And 72 of our middle schoolers participated. And that is not considering spring sports since they had not begun at the middle school level. 83 high schoolers in the winter and 40 middle schoolers uh, participated in winter sports. We had 147 high schoolers rostered to begin spring sports. Um, that is incredible to me. And we'll always look to grow that number through opportunity and through participation. And of course the middle school had not yet begun. 78% and 72% is an exceptional number. And gosh, would I love to see each of those get to 80%. Uh, but we'll continue to work on that. High school student council by and large was something that uh, Spencer was gonna report on. Our online campaign and election process is complete. We've seated 16 student council members and 18 Laker leaders, 34 students through that process were identified and uh, we'll begin the lead of our school. Uh, well, let's just say they already have uh, because Four of them participated in the secondary principal interview process last week. And I was uh, so very grateful to them for participating and having a chance to meet Dina. Our class advisors are set. So from a student council standpoint, we are ready to rock and roll for 2021 and make it an even better school year yet. And then finally, um, coaches, teachers, teachers, students, parents, community, um, as interview team, team members in coming up with some of these selections that we've been fortunate to add to our staff. I cannot say thank you enough and uh, as well as the importance uh, of their role in helping to select um, who the fortunate candidates are that get to lake, work with our Lakers. Uh, so thank you to everybody who's been part of our, our interview teams this year. And of course we covered our senior recognition committee's tireless efforts to honor our class of 2020. Um, so Looking forward to a great summer. We've already uh, had a couple of coaching, uh, coach, uh, coaching staff Zoom meetings and we'll have another one tomorrow as we look to um, start creating our summer activity schedule since we're opening it up quite a bit, but we need to have uh, their say and their planning and be on the same page in terms of protocol and getting that process underway. We can begin as soon as Friday, uh, but we'll make sure that we've got our, our our T's crossed and our I's dotted so that we uh, are working in unison with a schedule and proper pre-screen protocol uh, and starting our student athletes out uh, with some basic retraining, if you will, and reconditioning. Uh, so we'll meet tomorrow and I've asked them to stay connected to our student athletes uh, throughout this at home process. And, uh, and I, I believe that many of them have been doing just that. So besides the short-term plan for working our way through the uh, resuming of summer activities and taking a look at where we're going to be in terms of fall sports, which I'm very optimistic about, uh, and we have a MHSA Rep Council meeting on next Monday, a week from tonight, to discuss more on what summer and fall will look like. So I'm crossing my fingers, remaining optimistic, and I think we all should be optimistic uh, that fall sports will start on time, but more on that later. So something we've been working on for, for probably a year or more, and we are almost at the finalization stage. We're still in the, uh, uh, the site build stage. And uh, the one challenge is going to be, and, and the main focal effort is gonna be to streamline our department-wide communication. 
uh, both in-house and from coaches to families, coaches to student athletes. We use so many different platforms. We're moving to one and it's called Final Forms and information will go out as soon as our sites are, are finished and we've reviewed the information that we've got. From pre-participation compliance, health and safety of our student athletes, utilizing one common software platform between our office, coaches, our student athletes and parents. I think this is, this is going to be something that's um, been asked for by our parents, uh, something that I've been uh, planning to have some consistency in, in the way that we communicate with coaches, the way that com coaches communicate with student athletes and parents. And so when we see final forms or you see final forms rolled out, you'll know that that is going to be the, the beginning of what uh, our goal is, is to have buy-in and implementation of, of that uh, streamlined communication process and procedure, which uh, much of it will be information gathering from the families themselves rather than chasing paperwork and things like that. So look for great things there. Rachel and I are extremely excited. We've sort of um, uh, introduced this in brief to our coaches uh, and have let them know that, that final forms will become the primary mode of communication uh, between all of us within the department. So we're super excited for that. And that, that will be um, uh, one of the challenges, but the main challenge for to begin this 2021 school year. And that's, uh, if not this summer yet, hopefully. And that is to start that streamlined process. So with that, I say thanks to everybody on behalf of Glen Lake Athletics, our Visual and Performing Arts Student Council, uh, what uh, our board and, and John and our community and our staff has allowed and uh, for in terms of opportunity uh, for our students to grow this year has been absolutely incredible and appreciated and we look for even bigger and better to come. Thank you. Hey Mark, did anyone notice that you capitalized the in the L and highlight by the way? I'm sorry? It didn't go on notice that you capitalized the G and the L in highlights. <laughs> Thank you. That's a little touch I put in some of my communications. So I, I just wondered if you know if you wanted some recognition on that. I, I saw. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Just trying to be a little creative there. It was. It worked. <laughs> Mark, and I just wanted to say that Dina was really impressed with the student council members who are part of her interview committee, and she was really pleased that we prioritize having kid voices on the um, on the interview committee. So thank you for facilitating that and, and getting those kids involved in that. Um, well, she certainly. really appreciated it. Thank you very much. Uh, John and I spoke about it, so I'm going to pass the credit to him on uh, allowing them to be part of that process. Yeah. And so uh, our students were excited. They really, I think they're always a little bit nervous heading into those uh, interview teams and what comes out of that is uh, nothing short of a fantastic experience for them to see, as yeah. you know, the, the inside track to what goes on uh, when we hire our people. So yeah. very well, valuable. Thank you, thank you. John, for supporting that too. Questions, comments, concerns, others before I mute. And Spencer is just joining as well. Lisa, shall we, uh, shall we give him the floor or would you like to? I think so, yep. Spencer? Oh, hi, can you guys hear me all right? We can, thank you Spencer. Oh, it works this time. I'm so sorry I'm late. We had an emergency at work with one of our employees so I had to stay back a little bit. All righty. Well, I guess this is my last board report as student body president and just thank you so much for all of you guys amazing support throughout the year it's been amazing to work along with mr hoover mr mattson the board just to do what we could to help improve and make glen lake the amazing place it is and i enjoyed being in that position and just thank you so much for all your support and just being there along the way for us <laughs> So starting off with my report, the online campaign process began on May 12th and it concluded May 29th. And we did it in virtual class meetings with speeches and then we had the election, of course. And now you can see me. <laughs> um, 
So the process, it went very smoothly and student council, I believe is now all set. Mr. Matson, can you confirm that from your point? Confirmed. Awesome, all right. And then I just wanna do a quick congratulations to Millie. She is being, she is filling my shoes next year and I'm very excited to hear all the amazing things that she will do. She is gonna be an amazing executive board president and will provide great leadership and growth for student council next year. And also as well, congratulations to the other executive board members who were elected. I know they're all gonna do amazing. It's a great group of kids. Uh, the Laker leaders also, they play a very integral role in student council. For those that don't know, they are the people that sign on. They are like, they're volunteering their time basically to serve as what I call like the Senate of student council. They're like there for the helping hands and to provide input at the meetings. And we're hoping to look to grow and I believe that we are going to have bigger numbers next year especially with the upcoming freshmen I know a lot asked me along the way um eighth graders just asking like if they could be involved freshman year so I'm excited to see that and then also I just want to say good luck Mrs. Long I can't see her but I'm sure she's here somewhere I'm very excited to hear she's going to be Leland superintendent next year. She's going to do amazing with that school. And then also congratulations to my fellow graduates. It's been an amazing ride here at Glen Lake and I'm very sad to see it go. And very sad how it ended, but I'm very happy and thankful for the years and the year that we had together at Glen Lake here as seniors. So just very excited to see where everyone goes in their journey and very excited to see everyone for graduation once again. And then also, since this is my last meeting, I just wanna say a couple of words just in general to everyone, including the community. And just wanna say, thank you so much for the support that everyone has shown, not just for the seniors, but for the school and even for each other in the community through this crazy time and it's just been amazing to see everyone just kind of like come together and just so much support and positivity as we go through everything that's happening in the world even though if we don't know what's going to happen but we're still chugging along and being the awesome Laker family that we are so that's pretty much what I have to say and just once again just I can't say enough thank you so much for everything you guys have done it's been amazing Okay, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so you have a, you're the president, you have a, a Senate, you know, and so you have a body of students that are part of the student council. How do they become on the student council? You know, are this volunteer or is it a, you know, is it election by class or how do you do that? So the executive board is composed of the elected officials. So there's like the executive board president, vice president and secretary. So they are elected and they are voted for and campaigning to the entire student body. So like this year's they campaign to grades eight through 11 because that will be next, next year's high school student body. And then the class representatives. So you have class president, class vice president, class secretary slash treasurer they campaigned to their own grade. And those make up the 15 or so like executive board class officer group. And then the Laker leaders, they are just like the general members of student council. They aren't elected, but they are volunteering their time and they are part of student council. So they like, I guess they provide more of the muscle and the manpower. <laughs> <laughs> and help fill in where we can't so thank you thanks no problem and if i may spencer one more time everybody say thank you for your leadership um you have been your accountability and your dedication your attention to detail uh your calm demeanor when i sometimes get amped up or go a million miles an hour <laughs> and you help scale me back uh your leadership to our school 
uh, not only this past year, but just your presence and uh, your, your poise for your entire edu educational track will be definitely missed. Um, and you're handing the, the gavel over to another fantastic person, as you mentioned in Millie Fogel's song, but uh, thank you so much. You, you, you have been the right person for that spot and uh, your leadership has been exemplary. Thank you. It was my honor. Great job, buddy. Really proud of you. Great job. Thanks, Spencer. Um, we're moving on to transportation or operations with Steve Dwin. Uh, yes. Can you all hear me? Yes. That's, uh, Brooke can hear me. Great. So <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen. Can you all see that? <laughs> <laughs> Does that work? <laughs> Well, then I can't read it if I share it that way. <laughs> oh, these new, I'll tell you what. Steve, that, Madison, you, Steve, that was good enough. That worked for me. That was <laughs> Could you see that, Rick? Yeah, I had it. All right. Well, for the rest of you that couldn't see it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this, okay? So these are just some highlights from the year. Now, granted, this isn't the full year. This is, you know, from January or so. I mean, there's been so many highlights. I didn't have enough space, so I'm just going to uh, list a few of them. So having staffed the full uh, full enchilada on the night custodial crew with the addition of Katrina Gregg, it takes a huge strain off the other custodians and allowing them to focus more on their individual areas. So for that, I am super duper grateful. Um, hiring Dave Gothier as a mechanic uh, while Greg is on the road to recovery has been a godsend, I must tell you. Um, I don't know what we would do without uh, without Dave helping out, um, and I'm I'm glad to see Greg is in the picture here, and I'm glad to see him as he comes into the school more often. So we're really praying for Greg, and I'm just grateful that Dave has been able to help out. Um, here's an interesting one: um, with the, my staff has maintained a super clean school environment throughout the year, and believe it or not, we have one of the lowest absentee rates. Now, I'm not saying this is a direct correlation, but I'm telling you what, they've done some extra attention to disinfecting the areas, wiping down the common areas and the high touch point areas. And for whatever reason, we've had a really low uh, absentee rate. And so I'm just saying, hey, way to go custodians, way to go. John allowed me to hire a couple of extra people to, to do some extra cleaning for those, again, those high touch points. So I'm saying way to go folks. I think we did a great job with that. Um, and so then preparation for the summer building projects has been nothing short of spectacular. With John's expert direction in a very engaged and involved board, you all, we were able to award contracts to some highly qualified people, the architects, uh, the site engineers, the construction manager, as well as the extensive list of the needed uh, tradespeople that are involved in this whole project, the summer 2020 projects, you know, we're off to a great start. And at this time, the bus garage, the footprint has been cleared. It's ready for the site work. The tennis complex and the team rooms are set as well. Molen Excavating is planning to be here first thing Monday morning uh, with large equipment um, and start this much needed and anticipated work. So I'm very excited. I know you all are. And you know, I, I thank you all. You know, for, from, from day one, this has been, a, in my opinion, a very a very smooth transition. You all were very supportive and, and listened and asked the right questions. And with that, um, we're going to get we're going to get it right the first time. We're not doing this again. We're doing more projects, but not this again. Um, and so, and then, despite what, all that we have accomplished, we have a lot of work to do with future projects. Uh, we're going to beautify the main entrance. We're going to beautify the old bus garage and the courtyard area within the school, and. Another thing, I won't talk about the playground work. We're going to let John talk about that because I'm not taking the wind out of his sails on that one. I don't know anything about a playground project. Somebody else is going to talk about that. So that's going to happen. Um, and then, um, as I say, um, we have a lot to be grateful for. Um, this is kind of the, the challenging part of this all, right? We have a lot to be grateful for. We have outstanding educators. We have fantastic principals, excellent pair of pros. We have dedicated custodians and maintenance folks and mechanics and bus drivers. We have engaged students. And, you know, 
for all intents and purposes, we have the best superintendent in the business. Hint, hint. Uh, no, all, all kidding aside, John Hoover has been so easy, to, not easy to work with, but it's been a, it's been very satisfying working with John in this capacity. Um, he's a straight shooter. I, I know what he's thinking and he tells me whether he likes it or doesn't. So I don't have to beat around the bush. I appreciate that with, with a, with a superintendent. So thank you for that. Um, there'll be challenges in the months to come. We don't know what September is going to look like. Um, as we move forward, we must continually plan for the unknown and be flexible in our decisions and actions. Uh, again, it's a mystery. I don't know what September is going to look like. You know, we, we've got plans in place. And um, if anyone knows what it's going to look like, let me know because I need to know. And I be, feel very fortunate to be a part of this team of professionals. Uh, we will get through this uh, because we are Glen Lake. So there you have some of the, not all, but some of the highlights and some of the, the challenges that we're all going to face as a, as a school, as a board, as a community. And we will get through this. So any questions, any concerns um, on, on any of the, the building projects or anything that we've got going on? Okay. I, I mentioned, Steve, I mentioned to, um, and Mark, I mentioned to John that maybe we should see if maybe the tennis team wants to come you know, David pulls them together when they start breaking ground, you know, or maybe girls softball, girls soccer, you know, breaking ground for the, the team rooms. If, if they can do the Rick, that would be a great idea, I think, um, with direction from others. But if they can come by and I think we still have, obviously, uh, the numbers won't be a factor because we can get 500 or so there. We'll just maintain some distance and, and do the right thing. I don't have a problem with that at all. I think it would be It'd be kind of cool for them to see, you know, 10 years down the road. I was here when the shovels went in the ground or when the extras came. I think that would be a good memory for them all. So, yeah, leave it to Mark to maybe contact their coaches. And, heck, yeah, I think that'd be fun. So, good idea, Rick. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Well, you're welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Um, Greg, are you here? I am here. Great. Hey, I just, uh, well, I haven't been there much, but I was there today for the beginning of our state inspections, and we got our first half of our buses ready to go for next year with new green stickers on them, so that's a plus in the right direction, and uh, Dave has done a good job. He Missed a couple little things, but the inspector said we can live with this. So we're going to keep on going. And I think he's doing a great job down there. And Steve's been doing a great job. He got the, where the new garage is going to be. It looks like a nice big open field, but <laughs> hopefully there's a building headed in that direction. Um, and I'm looking forward to coming back and being part of it. Looking forward to you getting back. <laughs> Glad you're feeling better. Well, it's a, it's been a long road, but I hopefully talked to John the other day. I hopefully I headed in the right direction now. Great. Thank you, Greg. Yep. Uh, John Fields, are you here? Yes, I am. Hi, John. How you doing? Good. To uh, start off, uh, John suggested that we come and report on several of our successes, successes as well as a challenge. Um, and I'm going to change things up a little and just I want to lay out what my challenge moving forward is first. Um, obviously, the big challenge moving forward for the food service department is going to be providing meals in the fall. And what is that going to look like? Um, with that said, I'm going to say two very strong statements is one, uh, I don't have the answers to that yet. Number two, I'm not worried. And the reason I'm not worried is because I can go back to our successes and the teamwork and com camaraderie that has been built in our school and in my department that 
gives me confidence to say that we will get this figured out. Um, some of the things that we have accomplished in the course of the year is uh, we started a new service line for the elementary um, completely from scratch. Uh, it wasn't there last year and this year it was a whole lot of moving things around and shuffling our schedules and uh, just making it work and we did. Uh, by doing that, it allowed the secondary and elementary uh, to get through the lunch service uh, and cut out 45 minutes from the service day uh, and got them out to the classroom sooner, out to their uh, uh, recess sooner, and just less time standing in line, more time to have to... Uh, eat their food and to be with their friends. Um, so that was huge. Uh, also, we've done more catering and different kinds of catering than we've done in the past. Uh, the football event, for instance, was a huge uh, and wonderful event for the whole staff uh, to really just show their creative and culinary uh, expertise. And those opportunities don't come in that often so we're always grateful to see it but it also makes us hunger for more and we're going to pursue more catering in the future um, breakfast in the dojo uh, in years past uh, elementary students would get off from the uh, buses down by the elementary walk all the way to the kitchen over to the auditorium grab their meals go sit down and eat and by the time they get back to their class, a uh, good 25 to 30 minutes of their day has already passed. Um, by having the breakfast in the dojo, we're getting the kids there on time. Uh, we're seeing a large increase in our participation. Um, and I saw a lot of uh, collaboration uh, with both the food service and the pair pros to work out to get students in and out uh, very quickly. Uh, my hat's off to Heidi, who usually is the one who is out there uh, doing the legwork on that. Um, this year we had, uh, uh, with Chef Gene, two interns, John and Connor, and uh, they were able to do a lot of things with Gene, and they were also allowed to uh, explore uh, the culinary world, and uh, they took... Uh, some of their knowledge with them and they represented Glen Lake at the chili cook-off uh, and they competed against our board members uh, and they had a great time doing it. Um, the collaboration between food service and Amy White's class, uh, it's, it was just a wonderful experience to be able to be in a room with students and share with them some of our knowledge and see the excitement. It's uh, the other side that the, uh, we don't see very often inside the kitchen. So it was really wonderful to see a lot of that. Um, and then you come to uh, COVID um, and changing the entire operation in the course of a day. Um, talk about a lot of unknowns, but uh, in a very short amount of time, we were able to get things figured out and we were on a routine um, a large shout out to uh, Rebecca for doing a lot of coordinating with that. Um, a shout out to Lisa and Heidi as well for helping us to uh, produce for that. Um, at this point, we have served over 23,000 meals. And before the end of the month, we'll be planning to serve another 10,000 meals. Um, and I'd also like to take a moment to say thank you to all of the volunteers that helped deliver it. Uh, my staff and I are doing what we know how to do, and that's make food. But it took all of our volunteers and all the bus drivers to step in the gap and get that food to our students. And for that, I'm very, uh, very grateful. So in conclusion, we've had a lot of successes. Um, yes, the, uh, the challenge is real in front of us. Uh, and I have some answers to them, but I don't have all, but I know we will get there. And that's all I have, unless anybody has any questions. 
Great job, John. Good job, John. Nice job. Thank you for working so hard for our community too. It all goes back to my staff. They, they're the ones that give me the strength and energy to keep going. And they're the ones that are doing a lot of the legwork. And thank you. Kudos. Moving on, Grant, are you ready? Yes, I will just share my screen in a different way than Steve did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think Steve sure only had one, one piece of paper, though, I think is what happened. Yeah, yeah. He blocked okay. my screen. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, yeah, I, th this is actually a little bit odd to me, you know, wrapping up the year when I'm a new tech director and I haven't even been able to experience students in the classroom. And so uh, I, I will get to share a few things um, here. But uh, yeah, Kurt has been uh, instrumental in um, fixing and replacing staff and student devices uh, during this time that uh, people have been at home. He's been researching a, a phone system that will be more functional, functional and more cost effective, saving the district ongoing costs and looking to implement that in the 2021 school year. Uh, implementing a school management and filtering option, researching a better option for school radios to be implemented in the 2021 school year getting the structure together for a new service request system that's replacing school dude that as well is going to be saving the district uh, uh, a lot of money uh, and educating me on past practices so uh, coming into a, a, a school district uh, when there is a history and someone can pass on some of that information is really valuable uh, especially in technology um, I've been busy planning uh, and beginning the implementation of a technology plan for Glen Lake Community Schools. And I'm just really wary of uh, making it a, a responsible um, financial model. And uh, I think doing that, we can have the opportunities to really dream big and innovate instead of wasting monies in certain areas uh, just put some really exciting things uh, in place. So we're looking to reduce the server infrastructure by more than half, uh, planning to reduce licensing costs that uh, we've been paying for, um, implementing a move to a MDM, that's a mobile device management for all Microsoft and Mac devices. This actually will give us a lot better remote support options and uh, if there is any distance learning um, path in the future for us, this will actually be really uh, helpful. Uh, our devices end up being more secure. It empowers staff. We can have a, a store and they can install software instead of uh, relying on us to install software that they want and uh, better inventory controls because uh, at, at this point in time, I, I don't know when a device has had someone uh, the last time someone logged into it and if it's active uh, we'll, we'll have a whole lot more information to to, to work with there uh, improved rostering solutions so that just means uh, kids are rostered into different software solutions automatically rather than uh, teachers losing a lot of time when you think about every teacher rostering their kids into a, a, a software solution uh, that can all be automated and it can save them a lot of time um, we have planned admin tools to assist in security management for tech admins and insights for principals uh, sorry principals from this year you're not going to see it next year's principals will and they will love it um, Planned improvements to offsite backups. Uh, currently, we uh, there are some good backups uh, happening of our servers, but they happen in the same room. So if there was a disaster in the room, it would be a disaster for the school. So uh, we're getting those offsite. Um, 
I've attempted to get a handle of inventory of uh, staff devices and have plan and and plan a purchasing plan to uh, uh, improve those and for that to be an ongoing process. And the same with um, Chromebooks. And we're working on more of a rolling budget so that uh, Leanne can see in the future, this is how much I want to spend in this year, this year, and this year. And instead of these giant purchases that, that just happen uh, every every four or five years. Um, and we've just discussed and floated some ideas for potential uh, eSports, um, a cyber patriot program, uh, virtual reality. Uh, and I know I've got things written down that John hasn't seen yet. Um, cool tech camp, a, a satellite program, Classcraft and increasing the intern options. I, I've, I'm excited to get students involved in a lot of areas where um, technology is uh, a part of how the school operates, but also giving them the opportunities to get certifications and be qualified. So when they leave here, they could actually go out and get a job and then part-time study. Uh, it, there's just lots of, uh, options there for people with those sort of qualifications. Um, the greatest challenges for the technology department, um, uncertainties about the start of the school year. Uh, I think it's difficult to plan some of these new things uh, when we don't know how it's going to uh, pan out. And some things might have to wait for the second semester, but we can still plan for things. Uh, and then the amount of change we are implementing in this one summer is usually double what a normal school would do uh, with technology. So we've got our work cut out for us. And with that, any questions? Nice job, Grant. Yeah, buddy. Good work. Thank you, Grant. Um, Leanne. Are you present? I am. I'm just trying to figure out how to screen share. I had this on my desktop and I'm looking for it. Just I'm just turn your computer so we can see it. <laughs> and I practice this too. Mm -hmm. Leanne, if you needed to take a few minutes to get that sorted out, we can go to Bethany. I would appreciate that. I'm sorry about that. Nope, nope, that's not an issue. Are you ready, Bethany? I am. I am. Time to talk about the ESG. It's been an exciting year for us. Um, well, that's six of us. There are eight two ducked out early, so I don't have them on there. My apologies, but we do make it a point to get together socially outside of the school every few months. I do believe that it makes a huge difference. Um, hold on just a second. I'm getting an error from my Google Drive now. Hang on. We are able to see your successes and challenges page, Bethany. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it right there. I have categorized it into successes, things that we've done since January 1st. Um, each, each position, each of these women is a success in their department. They are a pillar of their department and nothing gets done without them. Um, these, I believe these successes are just in addition to the everyday heroes that they are. Um, in and of itself, the formation of our team, as we sat down together discussing this, so many of them came to me and said, just the formation of the executive secretary group is a success. Um, it broke departmental divide um, at times not only being siloed, it sometimes gave the impression, especially uh, 
different teams that occupied the offices before that it was a, a competition or a, a me versus them type thing. And becoming a group sort of defined everybody's roles and it aligned our goals on the same path. We now consult each other with, with information, with tasks, the idea share, the communication is always there. Um, and it's without hesitation when before, I, I heard this from one of our group members that before it would have been, she would have been a little bit hesitant to go to the group. And now she understands that it's a place where we can come together and problem solve as a group. Um, another success that happened uh, that was brought to me, again, I was receiving feedback from the group was the reclassification of different roles and salaries put in line. That's a huge thing. The appreciation that was showed by John and the board was immense. Um, we, as positions changed within the school or were shifted, we gained responsibilities in reporting to the state of Michigan. Um, the state of Michigan reporting is a web, a web that requires a flow chart and a graphing tree. And it's, in, it's absolutely crazy. But we had this giant list of items that we needed to take care of and we divided and conquered quite well. Uh, we also took on schools of choice after the first of the year, which has been fantastic. Patty and Amy are our leads on that. And they have, uh, they dive right in and uh, ready to tackle our first open enrollment here starting June 15th. Um, as a group, it also allowed us to communicate and have trainings with Leanne. So all of their purchasing um, questions were answered easily. She would sit down with us and anytime there was an update or anytime she needed assistance with something, it was really nice in our bi-weekly meetings that we had one place to go to where all of this could be communicated. And they've, they've enjoyed having that opportunity. Um, they worked on <sighs> School Dude, not the best of products. And we were using it for our tr field trip requests. They didn't like it. So we created our own. We created our own system for putting those together. Uh, Nicole and Jen Bosmore were integral in coming up with that uh, trial and error and getting it exactly the way they wanted. And it helped us do a better job of keeping track of those and making sure all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed when it comes to field trips. So there's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes with that. Uh, we were able to work on coverage, being interchangeable amongst uh, offices. Someone needs assistance, somebody's out, whatever's happening, one of us is, can easily pop in and cover for another office, which is great. Um, and then when the shutdown occurred, teachers hold an amazing amount of adaptability. But I tell you what, that secretarial group was astounding as well. The way they were able to shift gears on the drop of a, a dime and, and be able to su continue supporting the school to the highest level, kudos to them. It was amazing to watch and it was inspiring to be a part of it. Uh, as far as challenges for the coming 2021 year, 2021 school year, you, beyond COVID-19, I mean, I'd really like to talk about something else, so I'm going to. <laughs> As soon as we get that handled <laughs> and we are finished adapting to whatever is necessary to, to support the school through whatever next school year looks like, we would like to make all registration forms, those beginning of the school year packets, all the forms that parents need to fill out. We have some of them electronic, but it's always been like this in limbo thing. And with Grant's help, now with Grant being in there, we'd like to pick that back up as a group and work together to get that streamlined um, and an easy you know, way to reach out to parents and make sure that those are being completed and, and done in a timely manner. Um, we are going to look at doing a designated transportation line. So if there's ever a time, you know, bus notes, change of pickup, that sort of thing, we're gonna have one designated line with the new phone system. Um, that will help ease not only 
it'll ease the workload within certain offices, but it will also streamline that process and make sure that nothing is missed. Um, and I wouldn't say that having a new principal is a challenge, but it does, there's a, there's a, you have to get to know your principal and telepathy is hard. And when you have to learn to read the mind of a new administrator, you know, there's some time that goes into that, but the, the, the building offices are adept at doing that. But, but it does take time. It takes time to learn, you know, the new rhythm and, and working with a new administrator. Um, not only that, Becca will have to learn to work with Steve Bloom. So I've got three out of eight that are gonna be working with new people and that's, <laughs> that's a challenge. <laughs> and then one thing I would like to continue to provide, look for opportunities, just training opportunities, just a bit, just uh, conferences. Um, some of them have voiced wanting more Google training. So I'll be working with Kurt and Grant and finding opportunities to keep them motivated, keep them engaged and keep them learning. Anything I can answer? Bethany, could you explain the transportation line a little bit more to me? I didn't quite really understand what, you know, what you were discussing there. Yeah, so the building offices in particular have a high call volume of parents needing to change transportation plans, um, whether going on a different bus or, you know, grandma's now picking the child up, that sort of thing. And so having a designated line where you need to change, if you need to change a transportation plan, you call into that number and one person. Oh, you mean the phone, phone line. Okay. Yep. Cause I'm thinking about, you know, a, a, you know, a map, but you know, a line on a map. And I'm thinking, oh, gotcha. No, no. It's, it'll be a designated phone line to handle all of, transportation okay. changes. Okay. Bethany, can that phone be red, bright red? It's, it's right in your office, Steve. Too. <laughs> bright red. It's going to be bright red though. With a with a red light that'll flash. Yes, like the bat phone. Exactly. I, I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. Why okay. not? <laughs> yes. That's a great idea, Steve. Thank you. Yeah. I have a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> Bethany, thank you. You're doing a great job, Bethany. Oh, thank you. That means a lot to me. Yes, it. you are. Good job, Bethany. You're too kind. Thank we know you. too well you are the glue and thank you for all of your hard work you're a rock star Absolutely. Oh, and wow. so is your team your team is as well yes they are yes they are i, I they're amazing women to work with thank you yeah. very much for all of your support yeah hey. Leanne. Uh, be Leanne, Leanne, before you get started, Bethany, didn't you try to have dinner with your secretaries one night in an igloo? Yes, we did. We did meet in an igloo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for another time, Corey. You're going to want to ask her. <laughs> Can I come next time? <laughs> yeah. It is a riot. It's a riot. We try to come up with something different to do each time. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Leanne. Thank you. Okay, for mine, the business 2019-2020 successes have definitely has to be the budget. What we were able to do from the budget that was adopted last June to what we amended in January and then what you'll adopt on the 22nd is night and day. John and I have met with all of the administrative cabinet multiple times the good news is that they've taken over ownership of the budget. So rather than just regurgitating the budget year to year, there's actual input on it. And the budget process is transparent and is now understood. All very good things. On the payroll, we've had a lot of training in our payroll department on the new software. Sue has become payroll, has the MSBO payroll certification now, which is the Michigan School Business Official. She's had one-on-one -on -one mentoring with the ISD and it's given her a lot of added tools and confidence that as a new employee or a new payroll employee, she needed and it's really worked out really well. Accounts payable. We were 
when I came, I noticed when you do the 1099s at the end of the year, none of our vendors or very few of our vendors had W9s on file, which made the process really difficult. Thanks to Mary Shimmick and a lot of the parapros, we sent out over 900 letters to vendors and got the W9s. And they, we then entered them all, which made the 1099 process at the end of the year go, was seamless, which I really appreciated their help on that. For 2021, my opportunities, I want to look into an online payment system this year, whether it's pay schools, which is what I used in Traverse City and Sutton's Bay, or even piggyback off of what the food service department is using now that send money to schools. I'd like to get some of the checks and that kind of stuff out of the hands of the secretaries. One, because of COVID and not handling money and transactions. Two, taking anytime you take money out of the hands of someone, you reduce that chance of losing them or whatever. So it's a safer way to do it. So I, that's one of my goals for this summer. Also fixed assets. The MIS system, our software, has a fixed asset module that we can enter all of those fixed assets that we have to keep track of, which would be anything that we buy that's in its, on its own is worth $5,000. Not, not necessarily a computer, but Steve's new tractor. We have to keep track of, and by putting this on in that module, it will keep track of depreciation and those sorts of things that I need for the audit. And currently we're doing that all on a spreadsheet. So that's something I intended to get to this year. And with COVID, it didn't happen. I was on track to get it done. And then with cross training, I would really like to get someone and I've trained, I'm going to think I'm going to train Sue in accounts receivable and Becca in accounts payable. She's doing a lot of it already for food service. So that'll be an, an easy transition for her to finish out that process, just to have that redundancy and that cross training is never bad. So those are my three things that I'm hoping to do next year. And are there any questions? Yeah, I have a couple. Um, okay. So the, the online payment system, what you're really trying to do is get rid of any, any cash movement you know, and try to get it so it's it's non-cash because as you well know, cash disappears sometimes. But right. it's also going to make it easier if you have one type of system that, you know, and anybody can, you know, can pay the fees at school or pay for their, you know, pay for the meals or pay for a trip or something like that. It would be great to have one system that you can do all of that in. Absolutely. And pay schools is what I used in South Bay and I really liked it. It's online where you could just go to a web, uh, icon on our website and it could say, you know, child care tuition, it could say yearbooks, it could say anything like that. And you just click on it and pay. That's great. And then in the fixed assets, you know, Steve's going to have to put a, a barcode on his tractor at that point in time to keep track of where that thing is probably, right? Probably. Mm -hmm. um, and then what was I going to say? Um, oh, Leanne, on behalf of the finance committee, and I am speaking for myself, but I'm, I think I'm echoing Leah and Corey's comments. You've done a great job, and we appreciate the cooperation you've had with us to, you know, to, you know, because none of us do the job you do. We don't know the nuances, but you've been, you've been great to work with to explain to us, you know, why, why something is the way it is, and, you know, what's that mean, and what's this mean, and where's that money, and, and we, we appreciate it very much. Thank you. I second that. You've done a, an amazing job, Leanne. Thank you. I feel like I understand some numbers. <laughs> yeah, I actually still had a uh, finance committee meeting on my calendar today, and I was disappointed to not be able to see you guys. So <laughs> soon enough, we'll be back talking money. Soon, soon enough. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Good job. Yeah. Thank you, John and Leanne. This, the, the new budget, the way it's presented is a thousand times better than what we had before. I really appreciate that. Yes, yes, and yes. Great. Moving on to our, does anyone have anything else? Any other? Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind saying something for a second here. You know, you're probably tired of hearing me talk, but you know, bear with me for another minute. Um, I really appreciate these these cabinet reports and every six months this is I mean, it's a lot of work. I like the different ways 
people present things, even Steve presenting his backwards and on one piece of paper. Um, but it really helps us to understand what everybody's doing. And this is really kudos to you, John. You have put together a team of people that are pros in their, you know, in, in their respective areas. And it's recognized by us. We, we really appreciate it. You know, it's, it makes our job so much easier. And, you know, and, and just even talking to community members or whatever, you know, all we have are kudos to you, John, to your team, you know, to John Fields for, I mean, can you imagine 23,000 meals have gone out since the middle of March and another 10,000 before the end of the month? That's unbelievable. You know, out of, out of that kitchen and, and what's, you know, what's on the positive side, John Fields, is that you have had a chance to work with your team with no outside, you know, hey, wait a minute, we've got to feed that person or that person. You've been able to focus on cooking and focus on preparation and focus on getting this stuff put together. You know, it's probably given you a chance to really tighten up your team and, and what they do well and, you know, and recognize that. I'm just guessing that just from just from the opportunity you probably have. And, and as you notice, John Fields, every time I see you, I have questions for you about how you do different things. So someday I'd like to come into the kitchen and just, you know, and just be a grunt and maybe scrape dishes or something like that for a while, just to watch how you guys work. I, I would really appreciate it. So anyway, thank that, you, John Hoover. Thank you for the team you put together and every team member. It, it's a pleasure being on this board. You make it so easy to understand how we're running this school. Rick, anytime you're ready, we'll have a hairnet ready for you, okay? <laughs> well, I, I actually have a little more hair than Steve, so I guess I will need a net. Steve probably doesn't come in there with a net on, does he? I don't need one, Rick. <laughs> Just a little one for my eyebrows. I was going to say your eyebrows. You got nice eyebrows. Thank you. <laughs> Rick, uh, thank you so much. That, that, uh, means a lot. And thanks, Board, for recognizing uh, that the fact that these really are top shelf professionals uh, in their field. And, and I hope uh, that you would also know that beyond all the hard work, and, and, and obviously that was recognized tonight by those very, very kind and generous words, uh, when we get together, we have a lot of fun. <laughs> we work hard, but boy, we play hard, and we laugh a lot. And it just I don't know, it just goes along with the fact that, uh, you know, if we're going to be here working with and for children, uh, well, then let's make this a great place to be, right? Let's have a blast. We all roll up our sleeves, literally, figuratively. Uh, we put in some long hours, but it's a joy and it's a privilege. And to associate with you, uh, our Board of Education, again, that just adds to the joy. Uh, so, Rick, uh, I, I wouldn't try to... to uh, repeat those words. Those were just, uh, again, so incredibly well said, but uh, thank you for recognizing uh, these great men and women who make up your administrative cabinet. Thank you so much. Thanks, John. Yeah, and they were heartfelt. You know that. I do. I do. Thank you so much. All right. We're moving on to our action items, and um, the first one is uh, 55-20, which is um, seeking approval to join the Michigan Schools Energy Cooperative. Does anyone um, want to know anything about that beyond what we were told? I don't know. Any, is that something? Tell me what that is, Lisa. Do you know? I can, I can handle that one. It's okay. an energy cooperative that Michigan schools belong to and they will shop for the best price in natural gas. And it'll allow us to lock in on that for two or three years, which helps also keeps us at a consistent rate. It helps us budget. And so by joining that, we don't, we don't have to participate, but it gives us that option to do that if there's a low, if a low rate comes out. And Steve, it could be, we could do this for six months, right? So we could buy those futures. We're not tied into a certain amount of time. It okay. allows us to negotiate best prices to get uh, to make the, the best use of our budget uh, for the natural gas price. Okay, thank you, Leanne. I'm just surprised that we weren't already in something like that, John. Yeah, that, uh, yes. Yeah, I'm just, that, <laughs> just enough, enough, <laughs> enough said. You know, what surprised me too is that, you know, it is energy, you know, I guess on the electrical side, this is just for natural gas. 
you know, so there is there is there a buying consortium for for electrical? I'm not familiar with one, Leanne. Are you? MySec does both. I thought they did. The electrical, you had to have opted in by a certain time. Yeah. Yeah. And I can check into that. And and that one, Rick, that is a, a much more static time frame and price uh, versus being able to negotiate that. But yes, yes. There's 285 school districts in the consortium. Uh, so we, we can hopefully see a little better price. Our options are pretty limited on electrical costs here in the county. So I'd like to move that we um, join the, um, is it MISA, M-I-S-A, consortium? MISEC? MISEC, -E MISEC, sorry. Mm -hmm. MISEC consortium. I guess, Bethany, you can get it correct, right? You bet. <laughs> okay. Second. Is there any discussion? Um, I had one question. Is there a cost to join this? There's no cost to join. If we elect to purchase gas through them, they get a, and I don't remember the amount, it's a very minimal amount of what we buy. Okay. And that's just to cover their operating costs. Of exactly. The, of, the, of the nonprofit. Right, it's a nonprofit, so it's just a very small amount. And it's an optional thing to participate. Yeah. Yes. One of those, I did read the whole document, by the way, no, but I can't regurgitate it all. Good for you, Rick. Nice job, Rick. Thumbs up. I only, I only, fell, asleep, I only fell asleep four times, but I did that. that was a big document, Rick. Holy it was. <laughs> Okay. Ready for a vote, Bethany? Hazel Masu? Yes. Shane Halls? Yes. Mosier? Yes. Westner? Yes. Homa? Yes. McNitt? Yes. Siddall? Yes. The motion carries. Uh, action item 5620 is the approval of the TBAISD interdistrict open enrollment policy for 2020 to 2023. John, did you have anything to uh, about yeah, this? Thank, thank you, Lisa. This is just to remind you that this allows us to have a more customized uh, open enrollment plan versus using the states. So it allows us to be a 105, which is the interdistrict, and a 105C, which allows us to have an agreement with ISDs contiguous to TBA. And traditionally, folks, we've been both a 105 and a 105C. And this is a, a, a three-year agreement. It's renewed every three years. Yep. Uh, I'll, I guess I'll do it. So move. Let's, um, you know, let's continue to approve it for the next three years. I'll second. Is there any discussion? Bethany, a roll call vote? Shane Halls? Yes. Mosier? Yes. Westner? Yes. Homa? Yes. McNitt? Yes. Hazel Masu? Yes. Siddall? Yes. Uh, motion carries. Um, moving on to 5720, um, which is the approval of uh, Dina Richelieu, I believe. Rachelo. Rachelo, as um, secondary principal. Um, do you have anything to add there, John? Just for the community to uh, know that we spent uh, over seven hours uh, with Dina. Uh, over the course of that time, she met with board members, uh, both elementary and secondary staff, both instructional and non instructional staff. She met, as was mentioned earlier, with our student government uh, representatives under the direction of Mr. Madsen. Uh, she met with members of our parent action committee. And throughout that entire process, uh, she just continued to impress and, and show that uh, her years of experience, both as a, a principal and most recently working with Ferndale Public Schools as the assistant superintendent uh, over curriculum and instruction, which encompass many other duties outside of that particular uh, title. 
uh, that she was just a great fit, a, a great fit. Her character and competency uh, unquestioned and the fit uh, both for her uh, as she has family, extended family members that uh, have both worked here at Glen Lake. And uh, she has some, I believe, second cousins that are attending uh, the school district. Uh, her love for Glen Lake has been uh, exhibited over a number of years as she's shown interest to be a part of the Glen Lake Community Schools. And so uh, on behalf of all of those, uh, Lisa and board that participated last Friday, uh, it's with uh, great, great joy and with great enthusiasm, uh, I bring to you the name of uh, Dina Rochelo to be the new secondary principal. And I can add the salary amount uh, to this that we had it to be determined, but that base salary will be, uh, if you so feel to approve board, would be $110,000. This is a 12 month contract, of course. Uh, with that said, uh, the month of July is a lot less uh, intensive within the district uh, than the other 11 month, but it, it, in all intents and purposes, it is a 12 month contract. We need a motion to approve this action item. I'd love to do it. Um, I would like to submit item 5720, the approval of Dina Rochelow as secondary principal. Second. Yeah. Could you second, Leah? I missed it. Or was that Brooke? Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, any discussion? All right, Bethany, a roll call vote, please. Mosher? Yes. Wessner? Yes. Homa? Yes. McNitt? Yes. Hazel Masu? Yes. Shane Halls? Yes. Siddal? Yes. Um, I'd like to take this time to let the public know that after um, Brooke uh, gives her PAC uh, committee uh, report that will be um, open for public comment. Uh, so Brooke? Thank you. Yeah, so we had our final PAC meeting of the year. Um, it was our, uh, by far the most productive year in PAC, I would say, and all thanks for that goes to John for um, really listening to the, um, to the committee, um, taking its agenda items really seriously and um, moving swiftly to address them. So that was really wonderful. Thank you, John. Um, so the meeting was spent, um, John updated us on lots of projects, of course. Um, you know, the three summer projects, bus garage, tennis, and Laker team rooms. Um, let us know that the high school gym is getting a new, uh, the gym floor is being redone, replacing the lights. So that'll be really fun to see in the fall. Um, he touched on the elementary park and playground. And if I understand some of the preliminary work starts this summer, some of like kind of the stuff that more infrastructure, we will see something, but it's not like the really exciting stuff that's happening next summer, 2021. And, uh, I can't wait. I mean, the park playground idea sounds really fantastic. And, uh, let me see. Um, we spent considerable time, of course, talking um, about the what the fall could look like, but that's all speculation, um, which we acknowledged and understand that what's required of all of us is patience while we wait for the governor and her committee to um, let us know how, how to proceed or how we can proceed. And, um, and it's just great to know, of course, that the school is working hard um, on plans, um, you know, on lots of different kinds of plans, depending on what's, you know, what's coming, what, what will be expected of us in the fall. So um, that was a, a good discussion. Um, which one of the things that came out of that was this idea that it could be really useful to have some community um, based childcare solution coming out of this if, if we do have to work with a 50 50 sort of um, school year. But so that was another interesting conversation. Uh, and then, um, as Mark said, um, there's the uh, idea that some spring sports can actually happen. So kids who missed out on their spring sports season um, might be able to 
get back on the fields and practice and maybe even have some summer competition. Um, and John also mentioned the budget presentation that'll be coming up in two weeks. And once again, I'd just like to, um, you know, thank John for um, just the superior work on the budget. Um, and, and also just on bringing everybody along, you know, just the education piece um, of, of your cabinet, of all of us, um, so that now there's lots of brains focused on the budget. And um, that's just, you know, really such a wonderful thing. And um, yeah, I guess I, I think that's um, that sums up our pack. We don't plan to meet again until September, but um, anything could happen in this school year. So maybe there will be more meetings over the summer. Um, and then one other note, Marnie just texted a minute ago and was saying that next we need like an early childhood report to be given with some of these different reports, which would be really exciting too. So that's um, that's my that's the meeting. Great, thank you, Brooke. Just a quick aside. Um, she mentioned the governor's committee. I think I think there are thirty members on the committee that that. Um, but it was a volunteer thing, so I actually put an application in to be on that on that committee, and I got a, a rejection letter or an email just the other day. It said seventeen hundred people applied to be on you know for those thirty spots on that committee. I noticed there was quite a few Northern Michigan, Lisa Peacock from, well, she's the head of Glen, uh, Lila, Benzi, Charlevoix, she was accepted. Wayne Schmidt, he was accepted. So we'll have some coverage for Northern Lower Michigan, which is great. That's awesome you applied, Rick. Well, and that was, that was my purpose. It's just, you know, let's try to represent something from the Lila Peninsula. Um, public comment. Bethany, do we have any? No, not at this time. All right. We're moving on to John's uh, superintendent report. Great. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, Brooke covered so much of what I, I thought I might uh, be sharing tonight, but Brooke, really top shelf. Thank you for uh, doing that in, in, in such a concise and, and yet full manner. So let me spend my time simply on two things. One, uh, board, the essence of my year-end report uh, is not to be given tonight, but of course will occur on the 22nd, two weeks from tonight, when we talk, take a look at the budget, both that budget, which you'll uh, be approving to be closed, fiscal year 20, and then taking a look at fiscal year 21. And a part of that process, uh, you'll also be hearing from members of the cabinet as they talk about how the budget uh, looks going forward. They won't be talking about their budget that's come to an end. Uh, but they'll take, uh, take you through a little bit of their budget moving forward. Because board, really what we wanna be able to do is not just present to you a budget for fiscal year 21, the 2021 school year, but to really give you a vision and for you, the both vision you've given us that you can see it being actualized, things that you might want to add uh, in that process to make sure that the budget is not just uh, balanced and, and strong and and uh, the federal impact aid subsidy being reduced right now, or we're looking at the possibility of uh, where last year the entire amount was going into the operational budget. Uh, we're looking at only $1 million of that going into the operational budget, which gives you board $2.2 million to use on projects, uh, programs. Uh, maybe Marnie's great dream of uh, an early childhood director uh, in program, maybe that does come to pass. So you'll have opportunities to take a look at how uh, those funds can be used in ways that uh, also match with um, our vision traction organizer uh, and some of the things that we have identified as really keys. And what's exciting is to see things that you established as three-year goals already starting to occur and uh, be making some real traction uh, and, and movement on as we head into year two of your goal. So uh, the 22nd will be much more of my year end report. The other one is, uh, and thank you, Brooke, again, for just saying that really the key for us right now is while we're creating a structure for what the fall could look like, to be patient. That's not always easy, but patience is a virtue. And we're really calling upon the community to uh, 
showed that patients. And board, I will tell you, both from the PAC and others that are so kind to call me or shoot me an email, they're saying, uh, John, we're with you. We're with you. We're patient. We know you guys are in front of this. And uh, when the governor does provide that, re it's the return to learn uh, committee for the fall, when they provide us uh, with the guidance and direction that we hope to see again, no later than the middle of July, uh, board will be ready. We'll be ready to move. And so I just want to give you two uh, prognostications on my part. One is I believe they could come out and say, these are very firm guidelines. So uh, these are the thou shalt, the thou shalt nots. And it could be something like, uh, you, if you're going to uh, receive any money from the state, these are the things you're going to do. 50% uh, attendance. And they might say that needs to be 50% every day. It might be 50% for the week. Uh, and maybe give us a, a little movement. We know and we've talked about that without the Michigan Department of Education providing us with great flexibility, flexibility we really have not seen in the past from them, uh, for instance, like unlimited seat time waivers that uh, local school districts, you get to determine uh, what those seat time waivers are going to look like, how long they're going to be. Uh, there's that piece. So we're, we're expecting that, yep, if they say this is what you have to do, again, we're expecting 50%. But if you take a look at how the governor has worked with the reopening of Michigan, she's done it based on regions within the state and, and how the COVID response has been and what, that, uh, uh, what those numbers have shown. Again, just kind of following the numbers science, if you will. So I'm not going to be surprised if the, the governor and, that and her committee come out with saying, okay, uh, Leelanau County, you're part of Region 6. Uh, you, you have the option of uh, being able to go back full all in. All in. With these caveats. Still social distancing. Everyone's wearing a mask. Um, but if you can figure out how to get everybody in and do the social distancing, Region 6, uh, you can go ahead and have everybody in. Uh, personally, that's what I'm hoping for because it takes away that major issue of childcare. Uh, Brooke, every time we, and we talked for quite a while tonight about this, it always came down to which domino gets stood up and which 10 fall down. And so my goodness, the childcare piece, folks, that's a big one. And so we've been working as a, as a staff, Steve, thank you for the work that you've done to find and identify all of those areas within the school that could have uh, the social distancing needs for uh, 12. So that if we go in A and B group, 12 in the morning, 12 in the afternoon, or 12 Monday, 12 Tuesday, we've identified that. But we've also identified where we could be upwards of 24 to 25, and where those spaces are in the school. So if, uh, again, if she comes out and says, hey, region six and region eight, which is the upper peninsula, uh, if, you, if you can meet these guidelines, then you can be all in. And, and board, uh, again, I'm, I'm hoping that that's the case because any hybrid model, anything that's different from 100% online instruction or 100% face-to-face instruction to go to the hybrid model, it's a mess. I, I wish I could say that it, it, it could be real clean. It's not. It gets real messy and it gets messy really fast. And so uh, my hope is that we might have a, an option of being able to be all in. Again, understanding the guidelines and being able to meet those. So board, I'm more than happy to, to take any questions or comments uh, you have. Uh, you're reading and seeing the same things I am. You know, they've updated uh, the possible vaccines, vaccines, excuse me, and the number that we'll need from January to now they're saying not just the fall, but early fall. Again, we'll see. And Corey, maybe you, you've got more on, on that that you can share, but uh, we're, we're going to, to be as ready as we can each and every day. So when we finally get the word in July, uh, board then, I'll, I'll be able to come to you with great detail. We'll be able to share that with our committee. Uh, we know that a big part of the education piece is the parent education piece. Part of what we know what we want to do is no matter what that student's school day is going to look like, we're going to have a parent day or parent evening 
where we want the parents to come in, not just hear about what their student's day is going to be, we want them to come live it. And so whether that's just seven or eight minutes in each one of their classes, we wanna move them through the day. We wanna hear from them. They'll see things that we've missed so we can correct them. And we'll do this a week or two before school starts so that we want every parent to feel just as comfortable as they can. And then just to reiterate what I shared at the last meeting, for those parents that are saying, John, I'm not ready yet. I'm just not ready to send my children back yet. We're going to have a virtual instruction team. So my teachers that teach face-to-face -face during the day do not have to worry about going home and uh, doing some type of online uh, instruction to, to students that eventually will, will come back into their class, but are home for a period of time. We'll have instructors that will be taking the classroom instruction, uh, the materials that are being covered that will be uh, moved out to our, our students still at home. And those uh, virtual instruction team uh, leaders, if you will, uh, they'll take care of that and make sure those young people are getting everything they need. So we've built a framework. We're waiting for uh, the information to come in. We'll put the details in place. And board, I feel very confident that Glen Lake will be absolutely ready, both in the areas of transportation, uh, within the sanitizing and cleaning of classrooms in the building. Steve, you talked about all the key touch points. The instructional model will be in place and ready to go. And uh, We'll have our teachers safe, our students will be safe. And uh, again, with the guidance, and, and I spent time with Michelle Klein today at the health department. She's been wonderful to work with. Ashley Karshewski, our uh, school nurse. Corey is just invaluable. Uh, folks, we're, we're gonna be ready to go on September 8th. No matter what that model looks like, we'll be ready. But again, I'm, I'm really hoping it'll be an all-in model uh, with guidelines being followed that will allow us to have all of our young people back in place and not put a child care burden on our families that I'm very anxious about. I am very worried about what that could mean to our families economically uh, or families that might not be able to where we're sending children home uh, with, without adults there right away and uh, maybe putting some of that on a, on a high school student or a middle school student that's trying to go home and get their schoolwork done while trying to watch a, a second year, a second grade uh, sibling. So with that, what questions can I address for you to the best of my ability tonight? Great, John, thank you. John, um, I've, been a, I've been a little surprised in, in our business at Chair Republic. Um, we've had, a, we've had a, a fair number of people who just, uh, you know, they either are a little bit older and feel like they're at risk um, or, you know, obviously it's not something you discuss openly, but, you know, they may have a, a health issue um, that they feel that they're at higher risk uh, themselves to be in a, a high density social situation, you know, like, like a workplace. Um, you know, I, I say this just as a, as a, is more of a cautionary thing regarding staff. Uh, you know, we, we tend to focus and think a lot about the kids and, and of course that's where our hearts go first, but our staff, uh, I am concerned about staff and, um, you know, the potential to have some staff that don't feel comfortable returning, uh, when we get there. I know in my experience right up sometimes, unfortunately, right up till the day they're going to start, uh, they, they feel like they're going to come, but then when the morning comes to, to come into work, they feel like they can't, they can't do it. Um, and I, and I say that only as a thought, a thought starter in terms of how conversations, um, with the staff go along the same lines, because the, the parents and the kids are, are one part of it, but the, um, giving the staff an opportunity to really talk about whether or not they're, they're going to be comfortable based on the governor's you know, if she, if, if we are given the idea of it's an all go ahead, that, that may or may not work for some people too. So I, I just bring that up as something to, to think about in a, in thinking about how, how you move ahead through the course of the summer. And I'm not asking for anything from you, <laughs> a response. No, no. no. And that's kind. We, we have had that conversation with our staff. And right now, Jason, we have two of our classroom teachers that are in that uh, frame of mind right now. And so they're saying, hey, John, can we help drive 
lead, be a part of the virtual instruction team? And of course, our answer to them is, of course, absolutely. So thanks, Jason. I went right past me. I needed to share that. Thanks for bringing that up. I know at my hot, um, profession, there has been, it's hard to even staff on a weekly basis, but currently our um, zone has gotten uh, quite a bit of leeway. And I do know that that is helping Munson um, start planning for the future, but it still seems like there's change continuously because we're always monitoring 12 days out about what our numbers gonna look like when they come back in through the ER. And that's really the only way that we can measure where the virus is because the virus isn't going away and there's not adequate testing at the moment, really. I mean, there is, but not enough. So <clears throat> thank you for taking the extra care and concern during this um, experience. Well, thanks for being such a great uh, help and counselor to me, Corey. You, you've been great all along the way, and I'm really, really thankful. One of the things, Board, I would share with you is uh, one of my concerns is substitute teachers. So part of our virtual instruction team are substitute teachers that we want to pay to just stay with Glenn Lake. Uh, right now, we're just focused on those that already live in the district and really are our primary subs anyways, because the risk is you have a sub that was in this school district on Monday, that school district on Tuesday, they come to you on Wednesday. Uh, our goal, we want to have a cadre of subs that's ours. They're here. We know uh, there's their status. And uh, I don't know, I'm, does that make sense? Yes. I think that's a great idea. That well? Okay. So they're part of their virtual instruction team, but also our daytime subs. So that's good for them. It means consistency. Uh, they'll make a few more dollars. Yay, I'm all for that for them. Uh, and I think it protects us, Corey, uh, from any unconscious community spread if another school district has uh, a symptomatic uh, COVID case. That's very proactive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, and John, I want to make one quick comment just of praise that um, the letter you sent out dealing with the other, you know, world events, the um, tragic um, killing of George Floyd and the impact that that has on students and their questions and their concerns. I don't know when I've read a more sensitive and um, I don't know, just a character rich, somebody help me with words, but it was um, a lovely, lovely message to all of us. And I'm very, very grateful. Thank you. Lisa, that's my report for tonight. Thank you, John. Thank you. Um, Bethany, I don't think we had any board correspondence. Is that correct? Nothing. That's new. correct. Mm -hmm. Um, we're announcing our future meetings. Uh, we have a budget hearing on June 22nd at six o'clock. And we have um, our next a regular meeting on July 13th at six o'clock. Um, we're moving on to the last um, portion of the meeting where we can bring up subjects for future discussion um, or items of interest. And this is the time for anyone who has any ideas or something that they'd like discussed to bring it up so we can add it to the next, the next agenda. I just, I just wanted to um, actually say thank you to Mark and to Stephanie for the senior stuff. Um, this as you know, the senior recognition <coughs> really been fantastic, fantastic. Um, and the um, social media stuff, I can see that being something that continues on. It's been so much fun to read these every day and like know what's happening with the kids. And um, the senior drive was so much fun. The, the bag that you delivered was, you know, just full of great stuff. And 
Um, so I, I think you've just done a really fantastic job of celebrating these kids. And you, you, so thank you. Yes, thank thanks. you, Brooke. It's probably been more fun designing and ordering and just knowing that it's gonna go to that, everything we've done is just to benefit and put a smile on the faces of those kids. So uh, with the team of staff that we've had surrounding us, um, we appreciate you recognizing that, but uh, mm -hmm. truly so much fun to be a part of. Thanks. Thank you. I, I agree. Thank you. We had a blast doing it. And I don't know, you know, Mark and I talked about this. Um, you know, we miss them, I think, because they miss each as much as they miss each other. So it was it was fun for us to be able to see them, too. Thank you. And so pleased we're going to actually have graduation. And Thank you. Very excited for that. I, I had one other, um, this would fall under something for us to talk about. And, um, and I don't want it to be divisive, but I, I wonder about our um, responsibility as a district to maybe adjust or address anti-racism in our district. Um, I don't know if maybe that, I was thinking about it and thought, you know, maybe that's a club level thing in the secondary school um, for kids that are really interested in learning that um, Shannon Fisher, you know, just uh, was part of that doing our own work series and Margo, my daughter was too. Um, which was just a really impactful thing. And that's, you know, all about learning how to do our own work to confront um, anti-racism. And so uh, anyway, I just feel like maybe that's something for us to think about or talk about at some point. Yeah, thank you, Brooke. Uh, Steph, do you want to talk about some of the things that have been going on at your end, please? Yeah, thank you. So it's interesting, Brooke, that you brought that up. We had our um, we had our last staff meeting today and we spent the meeting talking about the issues, um, the social issues, um, how staff can first process individually what's been going on and then how can we together learn what our um, roles can be in addressing the concerns and helping students process. Um, we, we had a very lengthy and I think beautiful and open conversation. Mark can probably speak more to it um, as well. Um, and, and really, we, we talked about what does it look like to be a culturally responsive staff and a culturally responsive school and what kind of training can staff avail themselves up over the, of, over the summer to be in a position to have hard conversations and lead conversations um, to, to ensure that our classrooms are more inclusive of a diverse body of voices um, I think John stated it really beautifully in the letter. Um, our goal isn't to, um, you know, our, our goal isn't to create a socially, a, a social activist mentality in school, but to create an atmosphere in which multiple voices and viewpoints are honored and heard and learned. We heard from our English department um, that I think has done a beautiful job in diversifying the voices in our library so that students when they reach for a book they're they're hearing from they're hearing stories written by and about people um, who may look and believe differently than they do so um, I am so so encouraged to hear you ask that question because I think our staff needs to know that they are supported in um, in trying to provide a safe place for kids and staff to um, learn about things which are different from our own experiences. So um, I'm, I'm really gratified to hear you say that. And I think our staff would be as well to know that they would be supported in trying to learn as much as they can and help our kids learn as much as they can about a world experience that looks and feels different from um, what many of our experiences are. Thanks for such a thoughtful reply that's wonderful thank you um i think that if people are interested a really like good place to start would be a book club um the last school district that i came from in minnesota actually went through a school uh, like we we had a, a police murder in our community um and so we've 
our school district has dealt dealt we dealt with a lot of, of race and talking about race and, and white privilege and different lived experiences um and we thought a book club was very very helpful um, I, I love that you said that um emily alt and um a team of teachers have already formed um the framework for that so they've put out a survey to all of the staff and they've given them a list of choices of books and staff are choosing voluntarily if they'd like to be a part of a book club um, to, cho to choose one of these several texts that deal with white privilege and injustice and Black Lives Matter and some of the other um, kinds of issues that are coming to the surface right now. And so um, uh, we're, um, so, so that's in the works and um, they'll be facilitating that for, for staff over the summer. And I don't, I don't know what Emily's thoughts are about expanding that beyond the secondary school, but I can't imagine that they wouldn't want to if, if there were others that wanted to participate. So I think, I think you're right. It's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. And I will mention again, there is great training around culturally responsive teaching in schools. Um, and, and again, I, I just encourage anybody to do some reading and some learning and maybe participating in some culturally responsive training over the summer. This goes way back, but I was in a book club when I was at a private school in Cincinnati and they used a national organizational uh, organization seeking, seeking equi educational equity and diversity. And um, you went to uh, somewhere in uh, California, got very, very rich training. And our leader came back and worked with faculty with the thinking that if faculty were all exposed to more rich readings, films, you know, we, we always had dinner together um, at monthly meetings, then they could teach their classes more responsibly and responsively. And that went on for all the years that I worked at the school. So, you know, it's a big, big body of work. And if they're still in existence, it might be worth a look. Thanks, Jenna. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Any more thoughts on this or anything else? All right, with that. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to throw something out there. The, the students are going through an amazing year, especially the seniors, you know, with the uh, COVID, with the economic troubles we're going through right now, you know, with the, you know, the unrest, not unrest, but the, the rising up of people saying enough is enough in terms of police brutality. And a lot of times I see comparisons to 1968. And, and then I think back and I think, holy mackerel, I graduated from college in 1968. The day I graduated from college, I got my draft notice, and my first child was born three months later, and um, and I started my first real job at IBM, which I only had for six months because then I was in the service. So I mean, it's it's you know the, the things happen. You don't even think about what's going on. You just live it, you know. And then you look back on it later on and say, "Holy mackerel, a lot happened that year." Well, anyway, you get not that it mean, means anything to anybody, but 1968 was a pretty significant year for me. <laughs> Thank you. Rick. Um, with that, it's 825. We'll adjourn the meeting. Good meeting, everyone. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Um, everybody. Take care. Be safe. Right, oh, wait a minute. Is there our next meeting in face to face? June 22nd. Oh, yeah. At school. Face to face. Oh, face to face. I would, we should be able to, I think. As far as we know, we can. Uh, Rick, tomorrow we have a superintendent's meeting with uh, legal representation from MASB and Troon. Okay. One of the uh, topics is to make sure that that's going to uh, meet muster with uh, the way they're interpreting the executive order. You know, but that is we, that is the hope. Even when we meet face to face, I'd still like this view right here, and I, you know, it's easy to hear everybody and and you know see your expressions. I really like this. You know, it'd be nice to be near you, but I'm looking in people's ears when I'm looking, you know, when I'm at the school board. <laughs> and, and you do have very clean ears, bro. So, <laughs> Leah, your hair kind of covers yours. So. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Come up with a seating assignment, Rick. That's your, yeah. that's your homework for two weeks. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, unless we hear otherwise, we'll plan on a, a in-person meeting and um, we will definitely let everyone know if it's going to be another Zoom meeting. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.